just figured, you know, the truth will come out. You know, I'm, I'm an innocent man, and innocent people don't go to jail. What do you think this is all about? They said it's for the murder of Leah Frame. Did you do it? No, I didn't do it. They have nothing else to go on, and I'm the boyfriend. This afternoon, the body of a teenage female tentatively identified as Leah Freeman was discovered. Whoever did this needs to pay. If he's claiming he wasn't with her, but we can show he was with her, what's he hiding? I had met Leah when I was walking through the gym. She was a freshman, and I was a senior. Leah was like a sparkle. He was always in love in a way, you know, he always had a girl. The girls liked him. He was definitely a flirt. He was kind of into every girl. But he did seem like he really cared about her. He seemed like an OK kind of guy. But still, the age difference was there. And then I found out that they were um, being sexually active. And that was disturbing. I'll never forget that date. And it started out like any normal day. I hadn't seen her for a while. We were still really good friends, but we just didn't hang out as much because she was with Nick a lot. She was at Sherry's, and she wanted to go jogging and asked Sherry to go with her. Sherry asked her mom, and her mom said no. Because every time you do, Nick comes and picks Leah up, and you end up walking home alone. So Leah heard that, and I guess she got mad and started to walk off. She was headed toward the high school, spotted by numerous witnesses along the way. The next witness says that around 9.30 PM, she sees Leah standing outside a payphone. And there are two men arguing nearby. Next time we see Leah, she's standing outside the gas station. And that's the last time that anyone sees Leah. Several minutes later, a witness hears a high-pitched scream. It was 9 o'clock. I went to go over to Sherry's to go get Leah. I asked her where Leah was. She's probably walking home. You know, I'm sure that if you just drive to her house, you'll find her. So Nick gets back into his car and starts driving through the town of Coquille looking for Leah. He did call the house shortly after 10 that night. He said, is Leah there? And I said, Leah, no, isn't she with you? And he goes, well, he goes, it's all right. Don't worry. I'm going to go find her, and I'll bring her home. I mean, I had even talked to police twice that night. My headlight was out, and I got pulled over for it both times. I told him that I, you know, was looking for my girlfriend. I decided to go by Leah's house one more time. And I saw a glare on her, on her window. Thought it was her TV. Back then, it was 2000. It's not like she could send me a text. She couldn't call me on a cell phone. And so I thought she was home, and I went home after that. And I looked in her room, and her bed was empty. Leah's mom, Corey, calls at like 7.30 or 8 in the morning the next day. I said, where's Leah? She's not here. He goes, she didn't come home last night? And I said, no, where is she? He goes, I don't know. I went into town as, as quick as I could. I talked to Corey. We went down to the police department, and we filed a missing persons report. The police basically told us that she, Leah was probably a runaway. I knew something was wrong. This girl had no reason to run away. I don't remember what date it was that police called me. They wanted to talk to me. So of course, I'm going to go in, and I'm going to help them. Today is June 30th. It is 1348 hours. How would you characterize your personality? When she's around me, I don't know, she just seems really like. bright and happy-go-lucky and giggly. She's just a really good person. I started to have my concerns when I kind of started, I guess, trying to twist my words. The night that Leah disappeared, it's about 11.40. The mechanic worked the swing shift. He's driving home, and he saw a shoe lying on the road. That person came forward with the shoe. We showed it to uh, Leah's sister. She said, I think that's her shoe. Then on the 4th of July, her other shoe is discovered, and it's got blood on it. 
The distance from where the left shoe was found on Hudson Ridge back to the town of Coquille is about 10 mile stretch. When we had that second shoe with her blood on it, I think everybody felt that uh, this was not going to end well. The body of a teenage female, tentatively identified as Leah Freeman, was discovered. The body was in a bad, bad condition. It was August 3rd. I'd gone out to Laverne Park, and all of a sudden, a Coquille City cop pulled in. He said, Corey, I um, need to take you home. I said, they found her. I remember the exact moment, and I, mean, I broke down. I just remember that specific moment in time. That's the saddest moment that I've ever gone through. 15-year-old Leah Freeman vanished off the streets of Coquille five weeks ago. Her death is being treated as a homicide, but investigators are saying little else. I think that everybody was quick to point fingers at Nick because he's the most likely person being her boyfriend. Police just aren't able to make any kind of a case stick. As time went by, it slowly became a cold case. Fast forward eight years. A new sheriff comes into town, and he wants to look into the case. We looked at every person that was identified as a possible suspect in this case, and then we went forward. No matter which way we went, at the end of the day, it came back to Nick McGuffin. We're going to stop by Mr. McGuffin's residence and see if he's around. We've interviewed over 100, almost 200 people in the last six months. With all these witnesses coming forward, police say they're getting information that appears to contradict what Nick has said all along, that he had not seen Leah after he dropped her off at her girlfriend's house around 7 o'clock. I basically drove everywhere for that four hours looking for her, and I didn't see her once. We have several witnesses that actually placed Nick with Leah after 9 o'clock. If he's claiming he wasn't with her at night after 9 o'clock, but we can show he was with her, what's he hiding? With the 10th anniversary of Leah Freeman's disappearance and death just days away, authorities here in Kokio say they're now closer than ever to bringing justice to this case. I decided to take it to the grand jury. They called over 110 witnesses. And after presenting all this evidence, they came back and said, we think Nick did it. We think he ought to be charged. It was a normal day at work, and I had forgotten a recipe at my house. So I ran home real quick. Noticed I was being followed when I pulled up to my mailbox. Cars everywhere. Separate me. What do you think this is all about? Well, obviously, they said it's for the murder of Leah Freeman. Did you do it? No, I didn't do it. Of my life, man. Why do they think you did it? Because they have nothing else to go on, and I'm the boyfriend. Just wait a minute. All right. When I got arrested, I felt like a nightmare that I was trying to wake up from. But I never woke up. When we come back, Nick's nightmare comes alive in court. And what, if anything, did the defendant tell you? That I strangled that bitch, and I'll strangle you, too. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.